Hello! It's Wish.com time again. Do you know what? I might make these like a monthly thing, these videos. I am enjoying them. Actually, maybe they could replace the subscription boxes, which seem to be dying the death these days. But I'll tell you what's not dying the death. A website that sells all sorts of toots directly from people in China. Specifically, Wish.com. So here's the way it works. I call this format Lucky9 which is pretty much meaningless. No, wait, there's nine items. It's half meaningful. And what I do is I go on a website that generates random words. I take the first eight of those words. I put them one by one into wish.com search feature thing. And I buy the first item that comes up that's five pounds or less. I keep saying dollars in the other videos. I'm convinced it's dollars. It's not. It's all local currency. It's five pounds or less. And then the final one, the luckiest of them all, again, meaningless, um, I spend up to 15 pounds. Let us begin with today's first word and item, and that word was binders. Binders. Well, I only got one, and it is indeed a bound thing. But what does it bind inside? Answer, collectible cards, or, well, anything that's sort of card-sized, really, and card-shaped. That's quite important. I, have co of course, filled it with my lovely cards from Street Fighter the movie, of which I have the entire set, because I am unholy. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't actually enough space to put all the cards in individually, so I've had to do that thing where you double them up most of the time. Well, in fact, all the time, really, which is a shame, because you don't get to see the wonderful backs of the cards quite as easily. Really, I should get another one at some point, and then I can have this all out, and everybody can enjoy Sawada, everyone's favourite Street Fighter character. And look, there's Dalsim with a headache. All your favourites are in here. And also the characters from Street Fighter the movie. Second word? Angle. Angle. This one was relatively predictable, I suppose. This is certainly about the angles. So it's one of these sort of measuring and draw things very precisely devices. You can uh, undo them. Move it to where you want. Oh, I want this one at exactly six centimetres. Oh, look. And now I can move this down to, ooh, I don't know, there. And, and there. And there. And now I can exactly measure various different angles and indeed draw along these lines if necessary. I'll bet about 0.3% of everybody watching this video is going, my god, that's really useful. And the other 99.7% are going, oh dear, oh dear, I have no idea what I would use that for. But I'll tell you what you could use it for. An intriguing sculpture. Or you could even fashion it into a lethal weapon. Look, it, it looks exactly like Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. Take. Take. I had no idea what to expect from the word take, and I certainly wasn't expecting one ring to rule them all. How, how does that thing go? One ring to bring them all in, the darkness bind them, and all that. Yep. It's the Lord of the Rings, the One Ring, with all the little uh, elfy writings scratched thereon, on the inside and the outside. I think in the film, uh, and presumably the books, you, it only, you only read the writing if you chuck it in a fire. Which seems, I must say, a very irresponsible thing to do with a potentially expensive item of jewellery. And of course, if you put it on your finger, you turn invisible. Like just didn't happen there. Uh, this is size 11, incidentally, because... Uh, well, I just put a random number in, to be honest with you. So there we are, the one ring. But wait. <laughs> it's not just the one ring. It's the three rings of varying colours. Because, yes, um, yeah, basically for your couple of quid, you got um, three. So, so that's good, isn't it? Look, look, it's a silver one for, for reasons. And a black one with the writing on, which is the most aesthetically pleasing. But of course, in the film, it's literally called the One Ring. I mean, there are those other rings that are given to, like, the Ring Wraiths and the Dwarf Lords and the Elfie people. Um, are, are these supposed to be those? Do they look like these? I don't know. The only one you see in the film is the one old Gollum is after. And this one. Do you know, I actually auditioned for the role of uh, Gollum and Smeagol in Lord of the Rings. And I must say, I did a pretty good job. Oh, look! It's me rings, they're precious. You see? And I tell you what, Andy Serkis got the job instead. It's all politics. Beam. Beam. You beam me up, Scotty. Yeah, there, again, this one kind of makes sense. It's a beam of light. It is an LED small lamp. 
Hmm, I'm guessing it's a lamp that's small and has got an LED. This particular one is one watt and white. Well, at least that's what it says in the box. You're never quite sure what you get inside from wish.com. Um, oh. Well, that's that's does exactly what it says in the tin. Single LED and oh. Oh, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? It doesn't have a connector of any sort. So you can wire it straight into your electronics project or, or your cat's face or whatever it is you do with these things. How intriguing. What's the runoff again? Uh, one watt. Uh, you could probably run that off USB if you were to uh, wire it up properly. I was then considering doing it myself. But who cares? It's a single bloody LED. We all know what it looks like. I mean, imagine it would work. There's not a lot to go wrong with this. The housing is quite pleasing. You could uh, use it for a cannon on your Death Star. Or Star Destroyer is more likely, actually. Were they cans on this? Oh, yeah, they were when you got in quite close, weren't they? Turbo lasers. That's what they were called. Oh, my God. What am I saying next? Throat. Throat. So this one freaked me out a bit, because I was expecting it to come up with, you know, a scarf or something, and instead we get a pair of pliers? Throat pliers? Um, sort of needle nose things? Might you call them neck pliers? Is it confusion between throat and neck? I don't know, but I was not expecting throat to give me a pair of bloody pliers. They're quite interesting as well. They spring back, as you can see here. But you can also change the top to one of these exciting four different ones. Actually, these two are identical, and those two are identical. Okay, they give you spares. That makes sense. Um, if I can remember how, you can just like undo this. Well, I can't remember how I got it on now. That's annoying. Did you push it out and then... Yeah, here we are. We'll get there eventually, friends. Right, take that out. <gasps> Away you go, you foul top. We only require this one now. Put that on like so. And... Now we're going to fill this one through, aren't we? It's quite a fiddly process, this. But it does save you having two slightly different sets of pliers. And there we are. Pliotastic. Hooray! So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, and the handle's not up to much. I don't think I would trust these with much in the way of heavy work, but um, if you're just picking up a couple of bits every so often, that'll do the job, won't it? That'll do, pig. That'll do. Where pig equals wish.com. Agency. Agency. So, it's a quite literal form of agency here. They've given us one of their jolly, weird, totally unofficial collector's coins. For this time from the National Security Agency of America. <laughs> well, why does this exist? I don't know. Why is somebody going on the wish.com saying, Do you know what? I really, really wish I had some sort of uh, coin that commemorates the NSA. Well, there we go. So who are the NSA? Are they the ones who spy on people abroad or the people actually in their own country? I can't remember. But I tell you what. That red eagle has got a shield, a patriotic shield and a key. And on the back is the Great Seal of the United States, Washington, D.C. It's a really uh, big, chunky coin. Really nice enamel painting on it. I've got to say, it's the second coin I think I've had from Wish.com. They're really bloody nice. It even comes in this protective plastic thing. Tip top. I mean, I've got no idea who on earth would want it, but hey, it's really nice for what it is. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Inexplicably, it's a tarot deck, specifically the Rider Waite tarot. I really like tarot cards. Um, I really enjoy the sort of uh, allegorical imagery they're on. And the Rider Waite is one of the more famous ones. Let's open up here. Exciting fact, if you uh, believe in reading the future using tarot cards, you should never let anybody else handle your deck. Mm. All your decking outside your back garden. Mm. The Rudder Tarot Deck, famous 78 card tarot deck designed by Pamela Coleman Smith. Right, so this one's good. I'll tell you why this one's good. Because every single card has an image, a little explainy image on it, rather than just uh, the standard, you know, the major arcana, the um, sort of big cards that everybody's heard of, like, you know, the Empress and the Hierophant and the Devil and all that kind of stuff. You actually do have a little picture of everything. Look, see? Two of staffs there, man holding a globe, looking out wistfully to see as his staffs grow around him. The Page of Wands, he's got himself a big stick. He's a lucky boy, isn't he? Judgment, oh, the dead have been called up to hear this smooth jazz. So what are these cards like? They're very bloody thin. They are probably laminated. I mean, they're usable. Um, they're, they're fine, you know. 
God, sorry, we've got to do the we've got to do the tarot card joke. I played solitaire with tarot cards the other day, and three people died. There are longer variations. They're still not funny. The sun, here comes the sun, do 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 do, and he's a creepy fucker. Do 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 do. That's the bit of the song. It's saying the buskers can never play. Nightmare. Queen of Wands, the moon. Pissing off dogs and a crayfish for some reason. Ah, I do enjoy these. The star. Ooh, naughty bits. Well, barely. Um, sticks. The hermit. More sticks. The high priestess. Watch out, she's got a B and a J. Oh, blabby, right. That is the, mm, yeah, we'll skip over that one. The magician with his infinity symbol. A wistful man with three stars. The emperor. Oh, swords. The, it's, there's some real sort of dark imagery in the old um, swords deck, it must be said. Look. There's three swords stuck through a fucking heart in a rainstorm. The chariot. Oh, the two of swords. I always enjoyed that one. A perfect balance achieved from somebody who I imagine has really sore shoulders by now. Um, I don't know the colours on these. Look at the face. Look at the way the colours have been put on there. It's a real sort of mess. This is not a particularly good deck, but it was very cheap. So, you know, what does one expect? Ace of swords. So he's making some pentacles. The king of pentacles. My god, he looks like a Tyrell out of Game of Thrones. That gets up. Um, what are some of the more interesting ones? Ooh, a vision of the future in the cups. A hooded ghost. A see-through head. Castle Greyskull. All your favourites. The Page of Swords. The <laughs> Somebody's in trouble. He's trying to defend himself against a rising array of staves. Staves? Presumably wielded by attackers. Wheel of Fortune. Oh, that's a game show. Ah, there's the classic image of the devil where he has enslaved Adam and Eve or similar. You're right, lads. Yeah, enslaved humanity. Yeah, something to do with it. Uh, justice. The Tower. So in early uh, decks, this is called Le Maison de Dieu, as in the house of God or God's house. But that is, in fact, a corruption, friends, because what happened was they were printing across the bottom Le Maison de Diefel, the devil's house, but it cut the end off. And people thought it said Dieu, because they start with the same three letters, you see. That's what I was told by somebody who may have lied, so don't use me as a primary source. Uh, the hanged man and his glowing head. Your head glows if you get hung upside down for too long. And by glows, I mean you get really ill. Yeah, don't do that. Temperance. Piss around with some cups with one foot in the water. Why the devil not? Ah, uh, the three of pentacles. And that's the, look, at, look at that guy's get-up. What is that? That's a... Good God, I mean, that's a fashion stain and a half, isn't it? Death, there he is, parading along on his white horse. Behold a pale horse, and his name that sat in him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And as you can see, there's a dead king and dead commoners and a dead priest, because, of course, Death comes to all at some point or other with its white rose. However, there is a sunset on the horizon, for there is some hope. Um, yeah, but the death card in Tarot, as popularly said, is not actually necessarily a bad thing. Um, it just means change, generally. Whereas the devil is usually a bad thing, I believe. Three of Swords. That reminds me of a piece from Hero Quest. God, oh, those are the days. Somebody's got a lot of bloody sticks there. Arguably too many sticks. Ha! Is that the guy who was fighting earlier? <laughs> he lost, did he? Yeah, mate. I mean, I, I, I like your juggling shtick, but... <clears throat> That hat's got to go. It's got to go, mate. Right, let's have a quick thing through the world. Oh, people. Ooh, somebody hoarding his Four of Pentacles. The Knight of Cups. You need something more than that in battle, mate. Ha! Huh, this is weird. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that I've only got three cups. Don't worry, mate. I'm the magic cloud. Have a fourth. You left four, then. Oh, but we got loads of cups. We're really happy. Oh, I've knocked mine over. Oh, I mean, these two are all right, but I'm more obsessed with the ones that have fallen. Oh... Also, my clock makes me look like an obelisk. Um, ooh, sword Thief, always a classic. Uh, he's picking up the swords after a battle and people look gutted. Amazing. Oh, God. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, frankly, it's probably a reality show. Ah, oh, there we are, the Ten of Swords. A classic. Some poor bastard has ten swords in his back. That'll ruin your weekend, to say the least. Yeah, that, that's a pretty dismal card to get. I, um, so the least. Where is this nine of swords? There it is, the nine of swords. That's quite a horrible one. Somebody waking up in a nightmare of a load of swords flying over his head. Or maybe they have just woken up in a nightmare and they have those swords in their room. That's dangerous. And finally, the lovers. You see, they're the same people from the uh, devil one, but they're free at the moment. Anyway, that was some tarot cards. I like tarot cards. Medal. Medal. 
I, sh I was expecting a medal, I'll be honest with you, and not pin badges of Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> there he is in his uh, fist in the air pose, and there is sort of a closer up, slightly cartoonish version of him wearing a crown. But why medal? I, I don't really get it. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they're similar to medals technically i suppose but why freddie mercury why i don't get any of this one at all i suppose it makes more sense than enthusiasm for tarot but there we are anyway on to the biggie the final item sequence sequence so it turns out there's a board game called sequence <laughs> did you know that because i didn't and here it is with uh, some chinese writing on it as well it's fun it's challenging it's exciting it's sequence an exciting game of strategy. So, yeah, let's have a look. Uh, easy enough for children, challenging enough for adults. Oh, wait, I put in the word enough twice. Sorry, everyone. Play a game... No, let's start this again and try and use the words actually on here. Play a card from your hand. Place a chip on a corresponding space on the game board. When you have five in a row, it's a... Sequence. <laughs> it's like redacted. Learn to block your opponents. Remove their chips. Well, that's a bit rude. What about the burger? Watch out for the jacks. They're wild! With a little strategy and a little luck, you're a winner. Here is some Chinese text. Game instructions in English and Spanish. Instrucciones del juego en inglés y español. Contents, folding game board, sequence playing cards, 150 sequence playing chips, and game instructions. From 2 to 12 players. 12 players? Shit, son! That's a lot of people to play a game at one time. Here's some guys in their multicoloured shirts. They're playing a game. Good for them. Um, yeah, so I've not actually heard of this game. I don't know. Oh, I was going to say, I don't know what's inside, but as it seems to be impossible to open the box, I'm never going to find out. Ah, instructions in English and Spanish. Right. Call me Mr. Linguist, but I don't think that's either of those. Okay. Um, what have we got here? Oh, just packs of cards with sequence on the back, so they're specific. Oh, we can open them quite easily. No, we can't because the plastic didn't work. We can open this one quite easily. No, and again, it, it just doesn't kind of work, actually. I can rip this one more easily, though. What is the card quality like? Answer? Mm, bit low. Bit low, guys. Gotta say. Um, small cards as well. Not terrible. Not terrible, but not particularly good. Uh, all the class... Oh, there's a little bit of uh, an extra thing on there. I don't know what that says. Probably Jack. Or jack shit, maybe. <laughs> you see what I did there? I added a swear word. Right, yeah, you got loads of plastic coin coins and counters, whatever you like to call them. Those counters in this game. And you have the board. I hope there are some instructions in English. I'm never going to play this. Here we are. Yep, that's open. Oh, oh, I see. So the idea is play your cards that you have in your hand and put the counters on here to say what you've done and then try and get lines or something? I don't know. One-eyed jacks remove. Two-eyed jacks are wild. That's interesting. I, I want to know which jacks are... Um... Oh, I was going to say I can look on here for the jacks. Of course there aren't any because they're wild and therefore not on the board. Ah, well that's interesting. I wonder if this game's any good. I'd like to play it, but... Uh... Yeah, um, I get the feeling I'd have to have this translated first, really. I don't think Google would do a very good job of it. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Th this looks like a standard enough game that I could probably get the rules online. Tell you what, I shall attempt to play this with some other people at some point and report back. Or maybe I'll forget. I don't know. Subscribe for more.